Libraries. We all know them, we all love them, but what if right above your local library was a secret gathering of the world's most elite speed cubers, sharing the secrets of how to dominate the cubing world? Well, that's the exact situation I found myself in just the other day. Basically, I got a text from my friend one day that was a flyer for a local cubing club. It said, ever wonder how to solve Rubik's Cube? Learn easy and advanced algorithms that can help you master twisty puzzles. So I got this idea for a video where I entered the cubing club, pretended to be a beginner, had the other speed cubers teach me how to solve Rubik's Cube and then surprise them when I actually know how to solve it really fast. Kind of like this one Soup Timmy video where he pretends to be a beginner and then hires a fiber cubing coach to like teach him how to solve it, but an IRL in real life version. I thought it'd be really funny, but that plan fell apart the second I walked in the library. So basically I walk into the library and there's somebody behind me and I hold the door open for him and he goes, Tebow? Dude, I already got recognized. <laughs> There's no way. I learned that he's the organizer of the Cuban Club and he recognized me from a competition that we both went to. Dude, I'm making a video where I'm going into this club and pretending to be a beginner and getting taught by like people how to do it. I don't know how your club is set up, but I wanted to be like- oh. no, There are other people teaching, so. Perfect. Okay, so you're in on this. Can I yeah. fool them? So Daniel took me to the room where the club was being held. This did not go as I expected. <laughs> We're here, the secret cubing room. <laughs> Bro, this is so cool. I had no idea they had this at the library. Do you think anyone else here is gonna recognize me? Uh, Eddie Arts and I. All right, so I gotta watch out for him. So yeah, after setting up, we just raced a little bit. He was actually much faster than me, so he beat me almost every time. Oh shoot, <laughs> it fell on the floor. 11.1. <laughs> but that's when the first people walked into this cubing club and I had to switch to beginner mode. Hey, they're really high 46. Oh, nice. Wait, how do you do that? Do what? Like, solve that so fast. Um, so I use the seat off my The what? They make cross like this. Right. Oh, so it's like a, a plus sign. Almost. Yeah, like you make a plus sign. With all the edges matching, and I'll teach you what that is when the club starts. All right, all right. Then you solve all the corner pieces. So you get, oh, so you have like the white side already. Yeah. Oh, I think I did that once. Yeah, a lot of people try to do that, and yeah. that's actually the first step. So basically, Daniel tried teaching me how to solve the cube. It didn't really go as well as I expected. It was just kind of awkward pretending to not know how to solve the Rubik's Cube while being taught by someone who also knows that you know how to solve the Rubik's Cube. It just felt very forced, and no one was really watching either way because there were only a few people there. Do you know the, the right algorithm? I don't know if it's the right or wrong algorithm. Shall No, I, just, I, did, I said I didn't know oh, what, what the right algorithm is. But after a while, a few more people start joining, including the other organizer of the club, Eddie. Now, I quickly learned that Eddie is no ordinary speed cuber. He is a world-class solver of the Rubik's Clock. He's 11th in the world for clock average, so he's very good. So, he'll be helping me teach you guys today. So yeah, I tried getting Eddie, the other organizer, to teach me how to solve the cube because I actually hadn't told him that I was actually a speed cuber. Yeah, I have this cube that I need to solve. Can you like teach me how really quick? Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no? So he taught me the beginner's method of solving the 3x3, but the whole time he like definitely knew something was up. Like, I could tell he recognized me, but he just didn't know from where. What's his name? He loves uh, I don't remember. Did you tell me your name? Uh, yeah, my name's uh, Dylan. I don't know. Okay. So his name's Dylan. What's up, everyone? I don't know. I got the... Like, before when you saw him. Green. He's good. I'm <laughs> green? Know. No, but your logo has green. My logo has. Or the, guy, the guy that looks like you. He was searching all over YouTube, different channels, and eventually he stumbled across Tebow Cubes. Tebow, Tebow Cubes, Tebow Cubes, Tebow Cubes. Oh yeah, you're right. He looks actually a lot like me. I don't know. Tebow Cubes. Like that's, my cubes that's my twin brother. That's my twin brother. That's your yeah, twin brother. That's my twin brother who really? I got these Rubik's Cubes from for Christmas. Why did it take me forever? I was thinking like techno. Yeah. Yeah, bro, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a video where I, I, I get into a cubing club. I pretend to be a beginner, but like a lot of people here are not beginners. So it's like, I feel like I could just be, be myself and, and solve just normally. So after that, my cover was entirely blown. The act was up. I revealed that, yeah, I'm actually a speed cuber. I average like 11 seconds. 
I'm a YouTuber. I upload weekly entertaining Cuban content and I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. So definitely subscribe. But yeah, the act was up. I just joined the rest of the Cubers in just regular solving puzzles. I severely underestimated the people who would be in this club. I thought it would be mostly beginners trying to learn how to solve three by three, but it was actually mostly Cubers just having a good time cubing, kind of like a WCA competition, but without the competition, you're just kind of hanging out with other people who share a hobby as you. The um, Y3M. I got it from Daily Puzzles, the sponsor of today's video. And if you get order something from Daily Puzzles, make sure to use the code Tebo to get 5% off. So it was actually way more fun when I just started cubing without this act of trying to be a beginner. But it actually wouldn't be long before the master, me, became the student. You see, as I mentioned before, Eddie is 11th in the world at solving the Rubik's clock, and I am not so. Daniel, him, and I had an idea. You should do a seven simul art for one week. I should. You know, I did actually hear that I should learn seven, seven simul. You should. All right. You guys want to teach me seven simul? Yeah, I have I, no idea what that is. Okay, so infiltrating a Cuban club has turned into <laughs> Daniel and Eddie teach me clock, which is honestly <laughs> a lot more exciting. We're teaching him seven simul. Basically, seven simul is a super advanced clock method that all the best people use. It's basically where you, I guess, memorize the entire clock before even solving it during inspection and then solve it really quickly in seven moves or less. Meanwhile, when I tried practicing clock for a week about two years ago, I was using the beginner's method and I couldn't even get sub 20. So this was the new plan. Eddie taught me a version of, I think it's a version of seven simul or it's a different method, I'm not sure, but it's called the Sheeran method. Basically you memorize a bunch of numbers based on like where these little things are on the clock and their relations to each other. And then you add them up and subtract them and do a bunch of math. It's a surprising amount of math for just like a Rubik's Cube method. I guess when non-cubers think that people who solve Rubik's Cubes are really good at math, I guess they're kind of right when it comes to the clock. So here's a funny story actually. When I was scripting this video, I found a Reddit post of someone using the Sheeran method and a comment said, where did you learn Sheeran? And somebody else replied, find your local NR holder and make them teach you, which is kind of what I did without even realizing it. I mean, I don't think he holds NR, but he's definitely way up there in the world rankings. So he's teaching me this method. I'm trying to get the hang of it, but I just can't really remember what steps go in what order, where you're supposed to apply the numbers and all of that. It's like a super confusing method that I definitely need to get the hang of a little bit more. I love how before when you're like teaching, or you're like teaching through this, I was like pretending to be clueless. And then now I'm like, yeah. So I kept DNFing, it was DNF after DNF. Womp womp. But I did have a new goal. I'm kind of close. I am not leaving this room until I get a successful clock solve with this method. My only goal was to get a successful non-DNF solve with this new method that I was taught by the god of clock, Eddie. Seriously, it's super impressive how fast he memorizes all of this and then solves it. All right, new memo. Got it. You already got it? Just by looking at it like that? <laughs> you know all the numbers just from looking at it once? It kind of gave me like a new appreciation for clock. Like, I always thought clock was just, oh, like whatever, this random side event. It's not even a twisty puzzle. Why isn't it in the WCA? But it's like a pretty neat event with some, some very unique solving processes and stuff. Like, I might actually practice it a bit more. So I tried doing some solves and the club ended. I gotta be real with you. I didn't get that successful clock solve at all, which is kind of disappointing because I did say I am not leaving this room until I get a successful clock solve with this method. But I don't give up that easily and I can't end this video on a failure. So I know what I have to do. <sighs> Wish me luck. So scared. Yes! First try! First try! Oh my god! God, you don't know how much studying I had to do, how much memorizing. Oh my god. That was insane, but not as insane as that one time I went to a competition that got evacuated due to an emergency. Click here to see the vlog of that.